All right, going to be starting a, another surplus generator rehab project. This one's an uh, it's an MEP 501 Alpha. It's a uh, 28 volt DC generator. Uh, this is intended to be to help jumpstart a vehicle if you don't have another one or uh, act as an auxiliary power unit. Say you got a whole bunch of radios or something that you wanted to run in a military truck and instead of letting the engine run, you can pull this out the side and uh, attach it in some way or another, uh, usually through the slave port. Instead of killing your batteries, uh, just run it off this. Uh, it's got a little Yanmar L48 engine in it. Uh, definitely been sitting a while like most of the stuff I get. I got this in trade. 16.4 hours if the hour meter works. Um, looking at it, first thing that I can tell is wrong with it is the fuel piece is missing. Uh, there's usually like a little on and off that goes to the fuel filter. Fuel filter's probably all gummed up and then to the injection pump. That's definitely no good. Uh, the emergency shutoff wire or cable looks to be out of adjustment, though it may still work if this pulls hard enough. But otherwise, everything else seems pretty complete. Um, oh yeah, this, I gotta take this off and see if the handle just came undone and it's wrapped around in there. That's what I'm hoping. But uh, I'm gonna put out a little bit and then try to start it. Remove the bolts for the uh, fan shroud here. Heard a whole bunch of grimy noise and looks like the mud daubers and bees and stuff made themselves some nice nests in there. But other than needing to be cleaned out, it seems okay. And then once I got the recoil start, pull start piece, Looks like some troop tried to use 550 cord and did a decent job, and the handle just broke, so I got an extra handle. I think I'll be able to hook this back up and it'll be good. Uh, it appears as if we got compression. Unless I'm turning the wrong way here. Yeah, we got compression. Uh, decompression lever popped up, so I think she'll start. All right, so what I did is this actually was good to go. Looks like it was broke. And uh, Troop put a 550 cord and it slipped through, they gave up. But I had this old handle laying around, it seems like it's gonna work good. Rinsed out all the mud daubers and stuff that were in there. Air filter looks okay. This is a wet filter, so it always looks a little dirty when you open them up. Filled the crankcase with oil. It looked pretty decent in there. Um, off of another project, I had this. Since all the fittings were missing off the fuel tank, put like a gallon of fuel in here. Just ran a temporary line to the injection pump. And I've taken the bolt off the top of the injector. Um, and what I'm gonna do is with a 15 16 drill, while the recoil pull starter is off, you can put it on that nut, hold the decompression lever while you have fuel going and just keep cranking it and cranking it and cranking it so you don't have to keep pull starting it. To prime it with fuel so I'll open this and I'll hold this and start cranking it and tell me if you start seeing any fuel come out oh you want to know it help when you're doing it you have to engage the freaking fuel pump over here got to move the lever to run that would be helpful right <laughs> something coming out by now unless the seal didn't break enough all right I got this actually out of the injector and it's just kind of pointed to the side so if fuel is gonna come out you'll see it just to start to spurt a little bit and who knows it might actually already be there run all right troubleshoot some more all right so what our problem actually was is the the little valve that was underneath the tank wasn't feeding. Uh, so 
I think that's why we weren't getting any fuel up there. So now that we know for sure there's fuel going to the injection pump, There she goes, see it? Yep. All right, do that a little bit, all those little air bubbles. Yep. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is bolt this back together the way it needs to and put the recoil starter right back on. And hopefully, it should be a one pull and she'll fucking start up. A little bit of a pain in the ass to get that back in. We had to remove a bracket. <clears throat> recoil starter's back on. I'm just gonna leave the cover off this. We saw the fuel coming out, we're on run. See if she starts. I hope if I put down the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that time. Smoke came out. She's puffing. Just gonna keep trying here. The fucking recoiler. Dang. <laughs> well, that's it for tonight. <laughs> All right, since the recoil starter broke, I didn't really want to give up tonight. Moved over to the garage. I'm going to put a little bit of fuel just in this and hold it. I had a slave cable adapter attached to some short-used battery cables, and then I got jumpers run into my battery here in my uh, 831 Alpha. So we're going to try to start it like that. Ready? Yep. Here goes. Sprayed fuel all over me. <laughs> I hit the fucking kill button and it kept running though. That's not a good sign. slowly climb and it's spitting out all that smoke. I think it's getting too much fuel from the injection pump. But it was right in at 28 volts where it should have been. Okay, so let's make some power. Yes. Woo, look at all that smoke, man. Alright, so it wasn't shutting off when I would hit the kill switch. And like I suspected, like what happens a lot with these motors is someone didn't put it together properly. You can actually see how this is bent a little bit, but it moves. When they put it on, try to shine this light in there, but they actually broke the governor fork off and it's probably sitting at the bottom of the crankcase. Yeah, see, there it is. See how it snapped right there. You can oh, see the piece in there. I have it in off. As it runs, it moves over to move the little lever on the fuel to on. And what it was is it was just in the on position. So the only way to kill it was to decompress the engine. So it lost compression. And then as the engine turns or whatever, it will keep it going. And then this goes back and forth to actually pump the fuel on that spring. So this is my second motor like this. 
Um, you basically need to disassemble the entire motor to replace that. That's going to be fun. But that's where I'm at, so I'm going to research parts. I had one of these in the past, one of my old, old videos. I tried to convert it. This stuff is a super pain in the ass to take off. That's what I'm not looking forward to, but we'll see.